uh, real Van Halen with David Lee Roth playing us back in the break. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. Remember <laughs> those videos in the 80s, man? Oh, man. Uh, nothing better. Was there anything better than a Van Halen video? Michael Jackson video. All right, I, I get yeah. Everyone waited for those. But I tell you, when I'm riding down Van the road and Van Halen comes on, I tend <laughs> to drive a little faster, I admit it. And it's not, you know, it oh. just happens. David Lee Roth and Van Halen. Oh, yeah. Hey, the Berkeley County Youth Fair, as we know from uh, Mary Beth Blair's very calm performance this morning on the program. She was very reserved. Very reserved. <laughs> very reserved. <laughs> uh, uh, continuing along here through this uh, upcoming weekend. And wrestling is in addition to the, the youth fair. And when you're talking wrestling locally, you got to go back into the Wrestling Hall of Fame and pull out mm. Shane Shadows. Wow, thank you for a tremendous introduction there, Rob Mario. <laughs> thank you. It's been a long time. It has been. It's been probably 30 years or thereabouts that I've been coming out here with you and sitting and talking about wrestling and various yeah. other different uh, walks of life. Uh, if I may, for a second, before I uh, shift into full promotional mode, I'd just like to make a mention that uh, in my uh, everyday job at uh, Region 7 Workforce Development Board here in Martinsburg, uh, I've made many appearances on here previously. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our um, director, Peter Christensen, was killed on King Street Saturday night oh, in, a, in, a, in a very bad accident. Um, he was not only a, a director... But he was like family and a friend to me for 20 years. So I just want to make sure that I reach out here and make a mention. And um, rest in peace, Peter. You were a great guy. And anybody who's in my listening range or watching who wants to join us uh, this Saturday who was friends with Peter, just make sure that you, you, you check in with me because I'd love to be able to share a couple stories and a couple laughs with you. I, you know, so. I never put two and two together on that one, Shane. On. When I saw the name. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Know. The accident over here on King Street in Illinois Avenue, the unfortunate. Yeah. It's yeah. We we we've all just been so devastated by it at the office, and we're trying to, you know, we're just trying to sift through all that right now. It's been very, uh, very difficult. But I just wanted to mention that here at the top of my appearance. And, sure. And I hope that's okay. And I, I appreciate that. Hundred yeah. percent. You, you yeah. would you like to share a story right now? Uh, well, there, well, there's, there, there have just been so many of them with Peter. And if you knew him, he was a, uh, he was a great guy with a great, uh, zeal and zest for living and charismatic. I never heard anyone have a bad word to say about him. He was, uh, he was a one of a kind human being. And, uh, it was my pleasure to have been his friend for these last 20 years. We worked together in the car business previously and he, um, he actually just basically handpicked me to come into that position a couple years ago and help me change the course and direction of, of uh, my professional uh, life. And um, I'll never be able to repay him. I always tried to tell him as often as I could how appreciative I was, but you really, in moments like this, when you lose someone who's close to you, you really, you got to dig down deep and just, you're speaking to whatever, whatever you believe in, is it, but... Uh, I love the guy, and he was a very good friend, and, and I appreciate everything he ever did for me. God bless. So, thank you. Yeah, very sorry for your loss and uh, for his family. And uh, we, I remember seeing that press release, and uh, certainly a very tragic accident, but I never, again, I didn't put two and two together on that one until this moment. Understood. Understood. It's it was it It's been a crazy 48 hours because we didn't hear about it until, almost, until Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. None of us did at the office, so it's just been it's been kind of crazy over there as we all just kind of reconcile the fact that our friend is gone. So. Dylan, uh, if you're uh, yeah, if you're waving there, let's take our 9:57 break now, and we'll come back in two minutes, and we'll transition into the discussion of the wrestling event at the Berkeley County Youth Fair, and we'll be right back uh, to do that in in two minutes. And we transition into what you're doing this weekend at the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Is this the first time this show is getting put on at the Youth Fair? Yeah, this is the first time that we've ever had the opportunity to bring championship pro wrestling to the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Uh, this has been something that's been like my uh, my passion and my love and my side job since 1992. I put together uh, professional wrestling events, and obviously I have wrestled extensively all throughout uh, about an eight-state region. Um, so we've been fighting for years to try to get an opportunity to get in as to be part of the, the, uh, the Berkeley County Youth Fair. 
it's kind of an annual uh, thing that I do in January or February. Most of these uh, fairs, functions, and festivals are setting up their summer and their events. So I send out a whole bunch of emails and start sending a whole bunch of inquiries and making the phone calls and going back through people my connections and uh, this year we just had a great opportunity with the uh, the first vice president of berkeley county youth fair which his name's charlie moore and uh, he called he said i'm looking for somebody to to really take this slot and i'm very interested in what you're doing and i said well uh, let me explain to you exactly what we do is we bring the excitement of of what you see on television right live and smack to you in a very small and intimate setting now you know, the Berkeley County, uh, the main arena holds, you know, I believe somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 to 2,000. So, it, but it's, there's not a bad seat in the house. It's very big bleachers. And it's, you're, you're right on top of the action. And the carnivals and the fairs and the festivals are the heartbeat of the professional wrestling business. They have been doing it going the whole way back to what they used to call the AT or the, uh, the athletic shows in the early part of the 20th century, where, uh, where a local, uh, local guy would take on a, an out-of-town wrestler who had a reputation of some degree and they would put the money on the line like that way here beat the uh you beat the guy coming in from out of town you know the russian lion or or, mm -hmm. or whomever and uh it was big it was very big it, it's rooted in the carnivals pro wrestling and um we're happy to be taking part of it i mean there's a lot of professional wrestling it takes place all around on a weekly basis and some of them are very good and some of them are questionable but it's still the heartbeat, the very heartbeat of, of the professional wrestling business right here in the carnivals. And Berkeley County Youth Fair giving us an opportunity to be part of it this year. We're just thrilled. What time Saturday? 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 p.m. bell time. Uh, um, they wanted to put us in a, in a slot where we were bringing people in. I believe that's the – is that the last day of the fair or the next to the last day of the, of I the think fair? Saturday is. Yeah, I believe it's the last day. Yeah, yeah so they want to bring something in. Uh, I got a whole list of things because I told Charlie that I would try to get whatever events in mentioned from, from now until then that they're doing to try to – whatever I can do to help. Well, Mary Beth Blair mentioned a lot of stuff. Oh, she mentioned a lot of it right in front of didn't you? And she'll I, be on again Thursday, so you're good. Oh, okay, so now we can just talk about me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're fine. I mean, looking at you, Shane, I I wouldn't think you were a wrestler, being as gigantic as you are. Jeez. <laughs> Shane. Well, I used to be a lot less gigantic, um, but I, I guess I mean I I clock in, you know, in, in the two in the two eighty five range and six foot two. Uh, one time a day, I was smaller and faster. I was what they call a junior heavyweight or a cruiserweight style wrestler. And now I'm. I'm a little bit older now and slower, and I don't wrestle as often as I used to. How long has uh, it been since you've been in the squared circle? Two weeks ago. Oh, so pretty recently. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I, I still do. I do 10 or so of them a year where I physically get into the ring, but I, I don't. I don't over uh, emphasize my own performance at this point. At at my age and my level of experience, I'm a lot better suited to fill in. If somebody's hurt or someone doesn't show up as scheduled and so forth like that, I'll fill in more often than I'll schedule myself into something prominent. Well, I can tell when you've been wrestling because usually when you have been, the back of your head will be flatter from the folding chair being bashed <laughs> yeah. over your head. But it's coming back out. It's popping it's, back it's, out it's, good it's, now. It's coming, but now yeah. the hair's so going. Are you just promoting this weekend or will you be wrestling? Well, I will. there's a very good possibility I'll be in the ring. I mean, there's been a, a couple of scheduling snafus. I'll definitely be wrestling this week. We're doing a two-night engagement in Cleveland. Um, the Cuyahoga County Fair, which is right outside of Cleveland. We have been very fortunate that we, we uh, secured that little piece of business. We got a two-nighter there, and then we're coming in for, for Saturday afternoon. I might be uh, just tired enough just to sit out and watch on the sidelines. On Saturday. How, many, uh, how many wrestlers do you usually bring for one of these events? Well, um, let, let's say the average is probably all told anywhere from 12 to 16. Wow. 12 to 16 different guys. We like to try to give it some variety. Um, obviously, I've been doing this for a long time. I kind of subscribe to what they call the old school of wrestling. I'm not big into – you see a lot of different things. I don't know if you – I know Rob has watched – I don't know if you guys have, have really ever watched wrestling. Um, but yeah. I like to try to do things a little bit more traditional. I don't like a lot of multi, like three-way matches and a lot of hardcore. That There's – People hitting each other over the head with, you know, you know, bricks and sticks and tin cans and rubber bands. I'm not, sometimes wrestling gets wild anyway, but when it's just for the – when guys are doing that type of style on purpose, and you can go on the Internet and see guys, you know, 
lighting stuff on fire and flipping each other through barbed wire. There's absolutely zero talent involved in that. Mm-hmm. What we do is a is a hard physical business with elements of show business, of course. But we're not trying to light anybody on fire, and, and th- that's ridiculous. We want families to be feel safe coming with their children and introducing their kids to the wrestling business. I used to go when I was a child. My father took me, sometimes against his will, but he took me. <laughs> and it was just what I loved. And if you go too far, Alex, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, but if you get too far out and away from the type of things that people feel like they can do with their, with their uh, wife and their mm-hmm. kids – you're, you're just playing to an, a very minuscule audience of people who just, like, root for car accidents well, and crashes. Well, and, and, and he's not, just to clarify, he's not he's not saying that you should throw your wife and kids off the turnbuckle. No, no, absolutely not. I'm, I'm, once in a while, I mean, I've had to grab my children and, you know. And, well, and, and, and that's what you're going to do. Well, that's one of the big problems with children today is there's not enough grabbing of them and telling them <laughs> well, to behave. There, it, there is a lot of that. Like, come here, kid, and just give him a good, you know, right there like that and ram his head into the buckle give him a slam <laughs> and then you cover him and then you're looking around for the ref and it's like well geez your ref's not here and the wife time. comes oh, in and starts yeah. very slowly and yeah. she does a slow count and then i gotta complain at her and uh, come on pick up the pace carrie um could you put bonbon in a figure four leg lock right now I absolutely oh he yeah, absolutely could i absolutely could let's do it i'll yeah. hold the camera oh, yes, my yes. Lord, yes. yeah yeah <laughs> let's get Can it done do it? yeah I'll, uh, John, what do you, can, would you lay on the ground and he put you in a figure four? Yeah, label? not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is my chiropractor's listening? I'm going to need a double session this afternoon. <laughs> Have you ever had a? I've had a figure four leg lock put on me. It's painful. Yeah, it, it is really. brutal. Have you? Ever, you've never had a done deal? No, it's when I was in my I don't know late teens or early twenties. Just a bunch of us that were totally into wrestling, and uh, someone knew how to do a figure four leg lock and did it. And you are in trouble. If Dylan's got his ears on because I know he's into wrestling too. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. Right, uh, I, I understand and I, I see what you're going for with this. We're not talking like ECW or anything. We're going like old school. Yeah, NWA. we're going like the NWA and world class and mid south, like a, yeah. a, a, a better quality of of actual in ring wrestling as opposed to a to a. I mean, wrestling in, in, inherently has a certain um, circus like atmosphere. That's kind of what makes it fun. Black hat, white hat, good guy, bad guy. <laughs> Cowboys, Indians. I mean, that's that. That to me is wrestling, and um, we do all uh, all of that. And did, did you see the Ric Flair documentary? I, I have. What did you think of that? Um, it was it was because he bridged both styles of wrestling: the classic and then the old Vince McMahon showmanship. Sure, absolutely. I mean, Flair's the, the probably the best ever. Um, sometimes in, in the in the documentary, you kind of get lost in the idea that he got lost in who he who the real person being was Rick versus Flair. being yeah. Ric Flair. Yeah. And there's good and bad to, to be in like that. But Dude, I grew up on Bruno San Martino Bruno, and Dominic Danucci. <laughs> Bruno and yeah. Dominic, My yes. grandmother would sit there on the edge of her couch. And she's the one that turned me on to it. And we'd be, she'd be sitting there rooting for her Bruno and her Dominic Danucci because they mm-hmm. were a tag team as well as individuals. I met Bruno a few times. I never had the honor of meeting Dominic. Um even as recently as, I don't know, probably eight or ten years ago, we were going to bring him to an event just to have him and, and have him sign some things as I had never had the chance, and then he, then he got sick. And he just died here in the last few years. Dominic DiNucci. Yeah, but he uh, there's a guy over that lives in Pittsburgh area by the name of uh, uh, Kenny Jugan, um, Lord Zoltan, and, uh, who, who traveled with Bruno a lot and drove Dominic around and, mm-hmm. and so forth like that. And, you know, you make a lot of good connections in wrestling and you know, people who are like-minded who you might not have met otherwise because they live so far away or, you know, you meet a lot of great people uh, in, in doing this. I got a chance to meet Bruno San Martino in uh, 84 or 85 when I was working at KDKA Radio in Pittsburgh. He was a guest on their sports talk show and I was the producer so I got a chance to greet him and get him ready for the show. And Bruno wasn't all that tall, about 5'9", yeah. thick as he was tall, and scary looking. Gen- mm-hmm. Very gentle man, very gentle, but a scary looking dude after 30, 40 years of having his head beat on. Mm-hmm. He looked like a mob bag man. <laughs> you know, like, this, <laughs> like, he was, like this was the last face you were ever going to see. Right. 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 And uh, with you being an Italian from Pittsburgh, you would know <laughs> what a mob <laughs> bag man looks yeah. like. Let me tell you Yo. something. I, I have had the pleasure of, of working in the ring and promotionally with 
10 different former world heavyweight champions and I've been in the ring with dozens of Hall of Fame or Hall of Fame level professional wrestlers and guys from the whole way down to their first matches and there was nobody who I was more in awe of meeting and just yeah. shaking a hand of than Bruno San Martino. He I was, mean, it he literally gave me goosebumps to meet the man. And it was, my son went with me. My oldest son, Jeff, went along with me to meet him. And I think it was at a mall. And Tom Brandy, <laughs> another great wrestler, a friend of mine, introduced me to him. And it was just, my, and he, my son was a kid. He was like 30. He's like, wow. Yeah. Like, that guy just has something that you can't describe yes. you could not mm -hmm. define what bruno had he had it yes he absolutely <laughs> had it and more of it well, yeah. and they were talking a lot about wrestling on espn this week uh last weekend uh rick flair was on talking about steve mondo uh mcmichael yes because uh, he was he was enshrined in the hall of fame big bears guy i'm a big bears fan mm -hmm. but then he was a professional wrestler for a long time after that and he has mm -hmm. uh, he has als now and he's mm -hmm. and he's dying but Ric Flair is so – just there, there's something about Ric Flair when he's talking that you're just in awe of him. Yes, he has – he's he's an engaging talker. He's a, a fascinating personality. And a lot of a lot of his allure was the fact that he, he was the guy you wanted to be, wearing the, you know, the fancy Rolex watch and the, and the $1,000 alligator shoes. And he's out there with all the best-looking women, lives in the biggest house <laughs> on the biggest side of town. He was like, you know – brushing his hair it was it was phenomenal and he, he could back it up in the ring too mm. so the best matches that i have ever seen i went as a 17 year old uh, kid in my old 1971 uh, pontiac le mans sweet drove on a bad tire to washington to see uh, uh rick flair and, and ricky steamboat wrestle for 35 minutes mm. at the capitol center nice yeah so i mean it'd be vivid memories of, of so many of, of those type of matches that i got to see him involved in just off the charts yeah. off so the charts. on saturday saturday will, will we see someone jump into that ring and grab the microphone from the 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 announcer uh you know welcoming them and into the ring and and do a little trash talking to set up their match well, uh, are you gonna be you <laughs> are gonna be you not gonna be me well we do have the former ecw world's heavyweight champion the franchise shane douglas Ah. will be uh, is, is our headline act this Saturday afternoon. Um, Ricardo uh, Rodriguez, formerly of the WWE, formerly the partner and, and announcer for Alberto Del Rio, he will be on hand this Saturday as well. We have a six-man tag team match. We have a ladies match. Um, the, the, whole, the whole thing runs, you know, we're no intermission. It's probably going to be about 75 to 90 minutes of just nonstop exciting pro wrestling action. Uh, Michael Pavlik said he's been following Shane's work for over 30 years. Loved the show that you did with Jay Young yes. back across town back in the day. My old boss. Yes, Jay Young. Yeah, we used to, Mike used to come and, and bring his son George over, and he would uh, provide me with some tapes to watch once in a while of ECW matches and so forth like that. Mike, is a, thank you for, for uh, reaching out and, and sending in your message, Mike. Then thank you for remembering me. Um, primarily, uh, Mike was a school teacher in the Washington County yep. uh, public school system, which is getting to be pretty much like doing, you know, 50 years at Attica, <laughs> but, um, Jeez. but, you know, thanks for your support, Mike. And it means a lot to me that, um, I'm remembered and I hope you make it out this Saturday you know, to the fairgrounds. And again, that show starts at what time? 2 p.m. How much are your tickets? No, it's, it, it, the wrestling comes with your fair admission. Oh, that's bonus. Yeah. yeah, so it's like all the other entertainment that they're putting on. I mean, it's it, the wrestling event is free with your paid fair admission. So bring as many as you can. Uh, we got we got a big house, and we want to fill it. What did you think of Mickey Rourke's role, uh, work in The Wrestler? I was kind of conflicted about a lot of that. I mean, some of it I found to be accurate, and some of it I found to be a little over the top. A little over the top, but I think his, his overall performance wasn't bad. But it's just I wasn't comfortable with a lot of it. It's just kind of my mindset of wrestling, mm -hmm. and, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think he did a good job overall. So, what makes a person want to do this, mm -hmm. Shane? What yeah. made you want to do it? Absolute insanity. Uh, no, I was a fan from the time I was a kid. I mean, I found it, you know, through. Um, my brother uh, was a couple years older than me, and he was trading Sports Illustrated magazines. He came home with with wrestling magazines, and we were pointing out all these different guys who were coming from real sports. Um, Ernie, well, real sports, you know what I mean. Uh, like Ernie the Big Cat Lad played professional football. Wahoo McDaniel yep. played professional football. And Ken Patera 
<laughs> I'm sorry, it makes me laugh because Patera calls me a couple times a year just at random. No we'll kidding. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's and cool. We'll, yeah, and we'll we'll sit on the phone. Oh, you know, you you're familiar? I remember Patera? the name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was oh, an yeah. Olympic level weightlifter. Yeah. I mean, and, and had a great pro career, and just one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet in your life. And just we'll just sit there and talk for like two hours, and you know he'll drink beer while he's doing. It. Wow, my daughter's yelling for me because he Patera's like eighty years old yeah. now. And, <laughs> You know, my daughter's yelling for me. She wants me to come over here and do something with my grandson. All right, I'll talk to you later. That's awesome. Two, three times a year. But, yeah, so I found it like that, and we started just watching it, and we started. I was just so taken in by all the, the characters, the Wild Samoans and mm -hmm. Backlund and Bruno. and Jimmy Larry Snooker. Sabisco, Jimmy Snooker. Yeah. And, and I've, I've been such a lucky guy to have met so many of the people who I looked up to and was just in awe of as a child and I've gotten to work side by side with so many of them in the ring and I've gotten to, um, help them. I've promoted them. You've done events with them on it and, and I've helped them get booked elsewhere. Um, for other promoters, uh, I've kind of lived out a dream. I, I jokingly tell people all the time, the only thing I've never really done in pro wrestling is make real money. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. Hey, uh, it is uh, Saturday, two o'clock at the Berkeley County Youth Fair. What time will the program conclude, Shane? I would say we'll be, we'll be, uh, the final match will be over by three thirty. So about 90 minutes of your time and you'll definitely will not regret it. Excellent. That's all part of your fair admission this Saturday at the Berkeley County uh, youth fair shane great coming in uh, uh thanks for coming in great catching up with you man thank Good you stories. for providing me the opportunity to come in nice to see mr bob john debod and nice <laughs> to meet you brother and i hope you guys all make it out this saturday thanks dave ramsey show is coming up next this is talk radio dbr martinsburg and tv 10